This video is to show how users can use AdLink's LPCIE 7250 cards to take GPI signals into Just Macros and use relay closures to send GPIs out. If you're unfamiliar with GPIs, they're an historic method of triggering actions in broadcast gear. Many pieces of equipment still allow general purpose interface triggering and so it can be very useful in some situations. The AdLink card is a cost-effective PCIe solution. If we bring up their website. Uh, allowing computers to energize relays and read the status of optically isolated digital inputs. The cost of the card is relatively cheap. Uh, Amplicon, a UK supplier, price it at £157 plus VAT, which when you compare to the Blackmagic app, uh, Holden being the UK importer for Blackmagic, GPI and Tally interface £325 plus VAT, so quite a lot more uh, with the same eight inputs and eight outputs. What we have here is a termination unit. This does add a little extra to the cost of the setup, but the cable is a standard 50 pin SCSI cable. So the breakout box is not really required. It just makes this demo a little easier. If we have a look in Just Macros, I've actually added a screen to Just Macros um, to show the status of the inputs and allow the user to open and close the relays. You can see we have two rows of indicators. The top row is for the digital inputs and the bottom row is for the relays. So we can click on the, on the bottom row and toggle between the relay being open and closed. Red obviously indicating it's closed and white indicating it's open. If I turn my multimeter on, uh, the multimeter is connected to relay output three and multimeter is in continuity mode. So if I hit Relay 3, oops, sorry, I've got something else selected. I'll try that again. If I hit Relay 3, the multimeter beeps, indicating relay's closed. The moment I come off it, it comes off again. If we have a look at the inputs, uh, they can be triggered from as little as 3 volts. We're using an old mobile phone charger at 4.8. And if I trigger number six you'll see it goes green in the software uh, as soon as you close that it's green on input eight we have a little processing which will close relay two for 1.5 seconds so if i just do that you'll see it closes relay two goes and it's going it's not waiting for the the entire gpi cycle your pulse can be whatever length you like it's going on the change from low to high it triggers relay two so we'll do it one more time there you go now you can see i've attached a button uh, the button is on input four and this button is triggering an atm cut so you see as soon as the the green light comes on for four we get an atm cut if we put something a little bit more jarring on it's probably going to be a bit ob more obvious and there you go between bars and the footage the button can be used to do a cut so you can build pretty much anything you like if we switch back to relays for a moment and I open up the X keys screen and show this button what we can see here is we've got in the on down the code closes the relay with that command and in the on up it reopens the relay so if we test that you can see sorry there you go again there's really no latency the moment I touch the button see everything's nice and quick and it's just very simple code one line of code to make each change so finally if we have a look at the most obvious use uh, I toggle one more time our functionality tallying is obviously what relays are most often used for that's why the black magic app is a, a tally unit and what i've set up here is when input five is on air it will close our relay three so if we just look at that the moment five goes on air our relay closes 
and the moment we go to something else it comes off again so you can use that for tally lights or anything else you can think of i hope this makes it quite clear and uh, easy and cost effective thank you let's just run through the various scripts that make this demo work firstly there are very few commands uh, just initialize the card and get and set functions for the inputs and outputs um, there's nothing really more to it than that it's all really done with a GPI monitoring script uh, that's in the samples which is now a, a separate download add link PCIe 2750 and if we have a look in there we'll see it's very similar to the MIDI updates we looked at in the previous video uh, we have a start and a stop uh, in this case the start is the, the processing is moved to another script which is actually just launched by the start so if we have a look at the processing script uh, we'll see again similar to yesterday we initialize an array to hold the current state of all the inputs um, and then we set we use a, an environment variable to go around another never-ending loop or it, will, it ends when the environment variable is set to something else um, we check that the card is active and then we go round eight the eight inputs and we read whether or not that input status is high or not with that line of code there if it is high and the preview and the the array is false then we know we have to act because there's been a change of state so at the very least we set the array to be the the corrected value and we've got the opposite we've got uh, high to low done there as well and um, I'm also recording the time at which it happens uh, the reason for that is sometimes when with a switch you need uh, what's sometimes called a debounce timer which means that uh, if the switch makes and then breaks and then makes again then you don't get two two events you only get one you trigger on the first one um, and we're then just logging to the screen and then you can see what we do is we say if the input is eight then we've got our close relay wait oh, for one second I've always thought it was one and a half and uh, reopen it again and our input four is doing our ATM ME mixer cut. So if we wanted to change that to a transition instead, I can just comment and uncomment, save the script, and I need to stop the processing and restart it. And then we'll find that our button is now doing a slow fade. Like that if we switch to uh, a wipe instead it'll be a bit more obvious there you go so we're now doing a mix on there instead okay and that's it so let's have a look at how the screen uh, the new GUI screen works in just macros 2.6 it's possible to enable and disable uh, 10 buttons along this top menu bar uh, this is to allow for the new GUIs that we're adding and you know, for the user to configure how they want it to look entirely up to them. Uh, so first we have a script that turns on the buttons. So if we have a look at that. Start GPI display. Let's get rid of it. Uh, you can see that what we're doing here is we set the caption of button 1 to be GPI. We then set the script that runs when it's clicked to be 00G open GPI display and set enabled true turns the button on and off so you can see how simple that is if I just take that put it there false our button goes away and true brings it back so you can set up 10 buttons to do anything you want there so if we have a look at 00G open GDI display we can have a look at what that does GPI display and <laughs> what we see here is that it is opening a browser window and is making its HTTP request to the local machine and to the just macros 39812 socket 
uh, but you can see it's not using the request lower or execute lower commands you previously had to use. It is instead providing the name of a script that includes .html. The rest of this script is just setting up the, the height of the window and the position on the screen, the caption and the border style. This is the important bit and this is the new feature in Just Macros 2.6 is that Just Macros can now serve a page like a web server. So if we have a look at gpi.html, we'll find that in GUI pages. And in here you'll see repeated use of the new command response right. Uh, this is borrowed from classic ASP. And it basically allows Lua to write to a response document. So what you can see it doing is adding this, the normal things you'd find in an HTML document, the document type, the HTML heading script. We then add some JavaScript. The first bit is the click action to toggle a, a relay. The second one updates the relay's uh, status based on what the relay card is saying. Uh, the second bit of JavaScript updates the input status again each time it's making a request to just macros. And then at the bottom you'll see we've got just some very simple code to draw eight boxes to show the inputs and eight boxes to show the outputs. And right at the bottom we start the, the refresh, refreshing the screen constantly. And that's it, that's how it works. I hope you'll have a dig around in the new GUI samples. They'll be enhanced a great deal and very regularly over the next few weeks. But really, users should now be able to build almost any kind of interface they like. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Of course, post any questions that you've got on atmuser.com.